Hey there, welcome to episode three of this Koala Sampler tutorial series. And what we're looking at today is going to be the user interface. So of course, anything on the screen, all the tabs, the buttons, etc., etc. Just so we've got a good idea of where everything is, uh, because it makes life a lot easier when you start making beats if you can, yeah, locate all the things that you need. So as I said in episode one, when you open Koala, you won't have this fake looking NPC background skin with all the uh, stickers and things. Uh, that was just something I created because I just thought it looked cool. Uh, you will just have a nice plain red background screen. And at some point in another episode, I'll get into the settings and one of those will be uh, bringing your own skin in, show you how to do that. Um, so for today, yeah, let's take a look at the user interface. We know we're on the sample page because it's lit up red. And if we look across the top here, we've got three tabs uh, and a drop down menu. We've got sequence perform and then the drop down menu. Uh, if we look below those, in the middle here, we've got a nice little volume indicator. And at the moment, it's bouncing up and down because it's listening to my voice through the microphone, which is indicated underneath. If we have the icon to the left here, this headphone icon, if we turn that on, that allows you to listen to that input signal. So let's say you've got um, an external instrument or a turntable or something, and you're doing some sampling and you want to bring the audio in. If you can't hear it when you're bringing that input signal in, if you click this, you'll be able to hear the signal. Um, onto the right of it, we have this effects uh, little uh, button here. And inside of there, we've got these sort of eight different little effects. And those effects are applied to this input signal. So if I click on here, we've got things like more bass, reverb, more treble. There's a couple of things you can apply to that input signal. I don't use them very often personally, but they are there if you need them. It's similar story with the mic input here. Having it set to mic input and recording directly to a pad Um I just don't do very often, but I'm sure there's lots of people who would. You could like record just your ambient background noise. I could play like little drum sounds or like make stuff up, whatever it is. Uh, I could do all of that and record it through the internal microphone. Just don't do it a lot personally, but that's the option that's there. If we click on the mic, we get a couple of other options. We get to resample from app and we can import a file. Again, that will come a little bit later. Um, I'm not going to dive into that just yet. Now, what we've got underneath here is our 16 pads, as we can see quite clearly, all lit up and just waiting for us to load some samples into them. Underneath in the bottom left corner, we've got mute and solo. Now, if you don't see that, if you go to the drop down menu and then into settings and then to extras, you can see it's the top little layer. Uh, little switch you can turn on there. I don't know why you would ever turn them off. Maybe there is a reason, um, but I, they're super useful. So I always have mine turned on, but if you can't see them, that's where they are. Then underneath there, we've got these four pad banks. So essentially you get 64 pads uh, across these four banks here. Just like that. Then let's move over to the sequence tab. And this opens obviously a new window. And what we've got across here, which it's probably a little trickier to see because of my um, background skin, but you can see that we've got our little uh, sequence banks. And when we click on these, it opens up the sequence editor for us. And that's how we're gonna essentially put our beats together when we wanna like make a full track. Um, you can still load things to your pads and do all of that underneath. Um, you've got, uh, what have we got here? We've got eight times four. So we've got 32 of these sequences. And again, maybe not so clear on my screen, but where these little arrows are here, we can scroll along through whatever sequences we've got currently loaded up. Um, I'll leave it there just for now. But yeah, so that's where we're going to house all of our sequences. And if you think of the sequences as like, um, building blocks for the song. So one sequence could be like the intro. The next one might be where you've got, say, I don't know, like a verse and the next one, a chorus. And again, in a future video, when we deep dive into each of those, I'll show you how you can like group all of these together and do all that kind of stuff. But that's where they are. Then underneath, we've got this little piano roll, which allows us to choose a pad. And when you choose that pad, 
it allow it opens up the piano roll editor and we can actually play each pad in a, there's a bunch of different ways to do it but you can do it sort of uh, chromatically and that kind of thing and it then sort of turns it into more like an instrument that's playable again that's an episode on its own just because it's quite complicated and there's a lot we can go into um then you've got little things like here like undo and clear just for messing about with um some of the things that you've got in your sequences and stuff like that uh we got a thing here for like bar length and stuff again just for like doubling up sequences you also get that when you're inside of the sequence editor so if we double click back on this again uh, I can double up my bar length here so we can start setting the length of these sequences uh, to whatever our desire is. Again, I'm going to come in and look at the sequencing into uh, slightly more detail. I just want to show you where everything is again for today. So again, underneath our 16 pads are still playable at this point. And then again, same with our mute and our solo and our four other things. Uh, at the top, we've got some transport controls. Um, so we've got a play and a record. Now they play the sequences that you've created within these little sequence windows here. If you press play on just like a, uh, say you've got a sample loaded onto a pad and you press play, nothing's going to happen. It has to be loaded into the sequence first. And we've also got this little record button, which again, if we've got a sequence open here and we're playing along or we've got something going, if we hit record, we can get that into the, uh, into the sequence itself. Uh, over here to the right, we've got the BPM. So, of course, when you start a project, you'll probably want to come in here and set whatever you want your BPM to. You can click on it and you can drag it like in a bunch of different ways. You can drag it up and down it's a little slower, left and right a bit faster. You can set whatever you want your project BPM to be. You can also just tap it down and you can tap as well if you're trying to work out the BPM to a sample or something. You can just do a tap to try and work it out. You've also got a metronome that you can turn on, which again, if you're using this piano roll editor or you're just playing your pads in and you want to get them to the time of your track, then you can have a nice little audible metronome. And in the settings, there's a, a volume control and things for this. Then you can set your beats per bar. Generally, I usually keep it at like four uh, beats per bar because it's pretty standard. But if you want to get a bit more creative, you could do three beats per bar, whatever you want. You can play around with that. Got a quantize option, of course, when that's enabled, that when we're playing things into our sequence, our pads, whatever it is, then that's going to lock things to the grid. You can turn that off if you want more freedom. And then underneath here, we've got this swing option. Um, and again, I'll probably explain a little bit more of that when we get into sequencing and we bring some uh, audio in because it's easier to explain with like uh, audio playing. But it's going to affect the swing, particularly on like drum patterns and stuff like that. You might have heard of like the MPC like swing, but that's what that does essentially. Uh, so we can close that. Uh, and I think that covers everything on the sequence page. It's not, um, there's a lot to it, but it's not overly complicated and everything is laid out exactly where you need it, nice and easy to find. Sometimes when you open an app for the first time, it can be a bit daunting because you're not 100% certain where everything is. Um, but in this case, pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's go to our last big tab, which is the perform page. And this is where we apply our effects. So what we can still see at this point is the same transport controls our BPM and all of that, so you can still access that. We can still access all of our sequences from this page as well. And just basically what we've got at the bottom here are effects. Uh, and there's some really cool effects in here. I think that will be another little episode where I talk about effects and triggering them and how to set them up via MIDI and things like that. Um, but yeah, just know that you've got all of these effects here. You've got this first eight, and then you've got another bunch of them here. And the usual things, compression, whatever it is, uh, reverb, delay, you've got all kinds of things to play around with. So that's really cool. Uh, you've got a hold button at the bottom. So by default, when you trigger an effect, you'll notice as soon as I let go of my finger, it snaps back. So when you've got a sequence playing or something, it's kind of cool to be able to just pull that down and then like where like a beat changes or something, you might just want to snap it back and let it off. However, when we get further into like layering samples and editing samples and stuff, I find this hold button quite useful because you turn hold on, then of course it doesn't snap anymore. So we can just shift it and move it around. And I find that more useful when I'm like editing things. 
so that takes care of that. And then I think the last tab here will be our drop down with all of our settings. Um, and I kind of want to go through those. Uh, should we do it now? Yeah, I think I'll go through this menu now and I'll just save the settings option for later because I think they just need to speak about the settings on their own. So, of course, you can load a new project here. Uh, oh, sorry, you can start a new project. You can also load a project because, of course, you can save these. So anything you create, your beats, your songs, your sketches, whatever you want to call them, you can save them all. You can save as, and of course, you can load those back up at a later date. So you can just keep making project after project. We've got the option to record a song here. Uh, we've got the option to resample loop. And again, some of the things, if I don't go into the explanation now, it's just simply because there's a bit more to it than that, and it will probably come into play a little bit later. Um, we've got the option to export. Again, that's probably a video on its own, just because there's a good bunch of export options. Uh, we can import audio. We can import video, which is something that we really need to look at, because that's super cool. Then we got the settings, we can get to our help. And then because I have this uh, iOS version of the app, I could get live light for Ableton. It's got an access thing there to allow me to download that, which is really cool. Unfortunate that you can't do it on Android, but that's just the way it goes. Um, and yeah, and I've, I've already got the full version of Ableton 11, so I don't need it, but it is there. So that takes care of the user interface. Uh, as I said, just wanted to show you where everything is because it really makes a difference when you know your app inside and out. Um, and obviously, as I move through and start diving a little bit deeper on each section as we go, it's going to help you to know what I'm looking at and where we've, uh, you know, we've already seen where things are. So yeah, I hope that was fun. Catch you guys in the next episode. Take care.